Yeah, yeah he was supposedly was interested. Jake's story, but, but, it didn't affect you. but he only wanted to pay what the backers had in it, and they wanted to make a profit from it. So, which you can't blame them on that. I mean, it's a business, and. Uh, so things went round and round, and like I say, they kind of had a falling out over this sell it now for this or make money, and uh, that was about the that was about the end of it. And uh, why was Clive Davis being arrested by the FBI? <laughs> <laughs> he was in the music business. Clive, what? Payola? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Payola. Payola. And Paola was part of it. What they were doing was trying to make an example out of Clive Davis to keep yeah, the other record companies in line. Did. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. But there was, there was, um, there was some well-known stars that were complaining about the quality of women that were hired for the entertainment. And, uh, <laughs> oh I can see goodness. where the FBI would get involved in that. Nothing's changed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And, we're, and that brings us all the way back to the two blondes and the party. Yes. Yes. Well, you know those. Which two blondes was that? Oh, oh. you were talking about a. You want to be piggies with us? What's that? Do, do, do you want to be piggies with us girls? Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> you told that story, I guess. No, no, no. I'm not going to go into that. No. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> Well, you guys are history, and I'm really, really grateful. Delaware Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is grateful that you took this time. And that sounds like the end of a shake your hand business thing, but you're sending us away excited. <laughs> um, we're, you know, excited for the memories and will happily share them with other people who will say, oh my goodness, look who it is. <laughs> yeah. Now, Yeah. The, the very last one I ever heard, they were doing one of the last shows, and the last shows he was doing, he was coming over from a hospice in a, a medical transport. <laughs> and they, they would have the transport park backstage, and he would come up and do about 20 minutes. And uh, Brian McMahon told me this, who was playing guitar with him at the time, that Sacco called everybody over before he went on stage. He was very sick at that time. You can see the pictures. He's really, you know, down to skin and bones, and called everybody in the band over to the back of the uh, the transport and started paying everybody. And everybody's going, oh, we don't, you know, we don't want any money. You know, he said, now wait a minute. He said, I could die right here on the stage tonight. I could fall right over and die. And I don't want you having first running around town telling everybody I didn't pay you. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Well, did, and John had the story from Patty about the moment of Sacco's passing. Um, yeah, they had they had a bed set up in the, the living room of the apartment, and Sacco was on it. And they were listening to the music, you know, and they knew the end was coming, they knew it was right. near. And um, yes. evidently, he sat up and pointed to this hat on the wall. His derby. His derby, yeah. And they got the hat down, he put the hat on, he struck a pose and fell back and died. Oh my goodness. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's about perfect. Yeah. And then then he runs into Patty. Sacco's Sacco's living uh, uh, an associate for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And Patty's going through her pocketbook and handing him stuff. Of, oh, and here's here's a little bit of Sacco. And he hands him this little bottle that's got some of Sacco's ashes in it. So <laughs> John is out in LA. I'll let you take it from there. He's wondering what to do with Sacco's ashes, you know, so go ahead. Well, first of all, this was right after, yeah, so this had to be after 9-11 because, or at least when she did that, because I, I was freaked. I didn't want to carry his ashes on a plane. And I figured if they searched me, what the hell, how the hell am I going to explain this? So, uh, I ship him out, and I got him sitting around, and we had to sing in L.A. at Christmas. It never felt like Christmas. We would get people. Since everybody's a workman's out there anyway, we do get people together and we go to this restaurant in Malibu. It became a, a Christmas tradition with different people coming in now. And I had a friend who was actually from Dover who was also living in LA. He was at this one and he was off of well, he played a few different things with him. And uh, uh, Gordy St. Mary, if any of you know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he, uh, we, we were at the sound, so this is, this is the perfect day 
for us. So we go out on the beach at, at, at Malibu and you know, I uh, opened the bottle of soda and it was a total Lebowski moment. Sako came, he came, the wind hit him, he came right back in, on, not on us, but a couple of fishermen standing next to him. <laughs> And, and that's a perfect soccer moment because he didn't, he didn't swim. He didn't swim. <laughs> so he was kind of way in the ocean, but if you're going to put him out there in the deep water, uh-uh, no. And it just, just that wind blew it right back. <laughs> oh, that's classic. Yeah. That's, oh, cl- wow. that's yeah. classic. Well, we want to thank you guys. Yeah, we And us guys, we'd love to thank you. I mean, I think it's a wonderful yeah. thing you're doing with the Delaware Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to to get this history down there because you know it's it's a long time ago and we're not going to be here forever so yeah, it's, yeah well, we're wor- a, we're working on it so I, I think it's a great thing you're doing and i want to thank you for having us so and you're yeah. welcome yeah. it's been a blast <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah thank you john all right thank you john all right dennis thank you bye bye dennis we'll be in touch soon wow. all right